Oh my gosh. I am in shock. Oh shock. My. We were certain we, we were, were going certain home. we were going home. Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers. And after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds, we realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new adventure. Well, we just finished watching day five of RV Unplugged season two. And boy, all the emotions have come back. Nail biter. This one is a nail biter for sure. It, it, I rem, thinking back, I remember the day, and it started off so positive. <laughs> Isn't it, can't you say that about a lot of days? It started out so good, and then I put my feet off the bed and onto the floor. By the end of the find the park pass coin, things were bleak. Things went down. And they got worse, and the panic set in more, and the emotions set in more, because there was a long time between that challenge coin hunt that Todd said, this is going to be fun today. It wasn't fun because it made you painfully aware for a moment that this is an individual game. Right. The win is going to be an individual win. Yes, whoever wins RV Unplugged season two will either be donning a red outfit or a blue outfit, but this is going to be a two, two winner thing. Right. And it's life changing money and the title. So there was a long time between that and then the orb soccer game. And so I've been going through the footage we have from when we were sitting down talking about reactions. And for some reason, I do not have any footage from waking up that morning before the orb game, before the, the hunt game, as well as anything from in between that and the orb soccer. Everything I have is from the orb soccer on. So before we roll into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about that morning. Okay. Because we came into it thankful that we were still there after Truly. the whole vote off with, you know, Girl Camper. And then, of course, Kevin shocking everybody with having to name Darryl who goes home. and Clay. Did you see that coming? Did you see, like, Daryl and Clay as a potential first off of that team? So, thinking back to... That day, I remember what my thoughts were because it is very vivid, especially after watching the episode. What was going through my mind was very vivid from that day. So remember, we went into that vote off not knowing the power of the park pass. That's right. And it's interesting because I remember that night after we saw the power and remember our goal for us, at least, Voting off Girl Camper was just because we knew they were writing our name down. But we also kind of did jump in with everybody else. Flush and the pass out. We need to flush out that pass because if you're a fan of any other game as far as reality show, most of the time those immunity type idols, tokens, passes, whatever they are, usually would result in either A, a revote or the next person having votes would be the person going home. And that's why we had said in the diary room, this may be a mistake because my initial gut thought was make a tie. Right. Because if everybody is going to vote for Girl Camper and then Girl Camper votes for us, if you go the route of that park pass being the person with the next amount of votes goes home, that would have been us. us. So we were really trying to contemplate or we were contemplating this whole idea of let's have a tie so because everybody was positive girl camper had it because again of the comments that mary made asking like what happens 
So our thought was make it two to two. They play their thing. Now you have another you have another one. You're gonna have to have a revote or some kind of a tie kind of issue. But we had told everybody we're gonna vote with you for Girl Camper, so we decided to not go back on our word. But I did think it was a mistake. The thing is, is that now we learn it. And I think that everything was going through this, the minds of everybody over there as well, that they thought there was a possibility of three tokens. Mm. But, you know, you got to remember, they were not allowed to vote off, vote off uh, Jack and Shelby because no. they had immunity for the night from finding the Todd bobblehead. Right. So there was a chance that um, Aaron and Archer had one because they won that the kick dart thing. Right. Right. And then there was the chance that Kevin and Tabitha, Kevin and Tabitha had, it. had it. So I think a lot of people had the same idea of flush out this token. Just let's flush it out. Let the cards, you know, lie where they may. But now we see that the token is even more scary than just that person having an immunity. It actually gives them the power of naming with a single vote who goes home. And that's how Daryl and Clay goes home. It doesn't get re-put to a vote like, hey guys, all right, we can't vote for Kevin and Tabitha. Get back in that laundry room and let's re-vote for somebody other than them. It becomes right then in that moment, Kevin sends Daryl and Clay home. And I think that the reason that they picked um, Daryl and Clay, I mean, this is what's going through my hand, and this would make sense. I haven't talked to them about it, but if you're under the impression that Aaron and Archer have it, right, right, and you cannot vote out Jack, Jack and, and Shelby. Shelby, there's only two people he can put up. Yeah, Ashanti the Adventure and Bandits mm -hmm. or Daryl and Clay. That's it. Because think about this: had he picked Aaron and Archer, and Aaron and Archer had it. They could have then renamed Kevin and Tabitha because they've already played a park pass. Right. Can you imagine that? I name Daryl, I name Aaron and Archer, and Aaron picks up the token, and now he can name whoever he wants other than Jack and Shelby, who have immunity, and it's in, so it could have come back to bite him in the butt. So I think it was a safe bet to get One rid of Daryl and Clay, and they were strong competitors. So, like, let's we only have it's one or the other. So I have been thinking over the last week on our side of everything that happened. And we had said that night after that happened, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, it's a good thing they didn't have it because they would have stood up and named <laughs> us to go home. Boom, boom, go. But after all of the events that we saw happen during the post show last week, where Mary and Lisa were upset, they felt blindsided and betrayed. I kind of want to sit down and ask Lisa, like during uh, the rally, had that happened, if you would have had it, would you have then stood up and named, for example, Dustin and Leslie because you felt, so yeah. even if they had it, we might not have gone home. We'll never Because know. they would have, if it was me, I would have been like, okay, I was sending home Joe and Rachel, but now that you've backstabbed me, I'm, I'm sending, sending you home different. instead, yeah. right? Because now your alliance is over. And it's funny, because we were talking to Anthony last night about alliances. There, If you watch a lot of reality TV show, there has never been an alliance that stuck from day one to the end, except for the very first season of Survivor. And Alliance with, RV. And those Alliance are, those are the only two that you've but been able to trust. Generally, you start it, it breaks, a new one starts, it breaks because everybody's doing whatever they need to do to get to the end. So we had all of that. We have the park pass. We don't find the park, the hidden park pass. And at that point, I remember when it was right over, Todd walked up to me. He's like, you are going to shoot yourself when you find out where it was. Because I had my hand on it. And then not only did I have my hand on it right before Leslie, because I was there, you then scooted in right next to me and had your hand in there as Leslie was grabbing it. Right. So Leslie, as as she actually had shared in their own you know, response, that they had, she had to quickly like cup it and hide it, kind of cup it and try to make. You know, fortunately, I'm pretty oblivious to stuff, clearly, so I didn't notice any weight in her pocket. Like we heard the blue team talking about, like they thought 
pretty they were pretty sure the wags had it right. be, based on how they were putting their hands in their jacket type of thing like somebody's right. holding a token you know weight wise so that was over by like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock something now like you're that. just sitting now we sat around all day so before we go into Thinking. the footage let's tell you what we did that day once it was over we all just hovered around matt and mandy's um RV in the front there and we just all just talked it was it was a good day of talking but there was a lot of at least for us what do we do how do things go w what if we leave are they talking you even sat there and pet scout for a while which was amazing you were playing with scout and if you don't know Rachel is terrified of lizards iguanas and they reptiles. have a bearded dragon named scout who really you know needs some sunshine and outdoor time um, and it was very cold, so whenever we would have a little break in the cold and have a little warm, sunny stuff, like, show up, Scout came out. And at first, I was very scared, but I think Scout is a fantastic ambassador for Bearded Dragons because he was super chill. Um, he didn't make any crazy moves, but he was, he's kind of a clown a yeah. little bit. So I we're really gonna enjoyed, a, we're going to have a pet bearded dragon. No, I'm not that far, but he really made me feel comfortable around him. And yeah. he was just a really, really sweet, sweet bearded dragon. So in the midst of all of the talks and there really was no gameplay talk. For us, knowing that a target has been on our back, we were worried that if we left, there would be gameplay talk about how to get rid of us. So we made it a point to never let everybody be alone. Right. So right? either Joe was in the group or I was in the group. And so if I had to go to the bathroom, Rachel would stay. Or I was trying to edit videos, Rachel would stay. But I saw and we everybody. Would always switch. Everybody was sort I think, of doing I that. I think it was going through everybody's head is don't let anybody be alone because then you can't have gameplay talk. That is very fatiguing. Because I emotionally, loved, I love to visit with people. That's like my favorite thing. But I never am visiting and have any other agenda going on in the back part of my mind. But this was an exception. Like you're out there, and if I wasn't thinking, I can't leave without Joe being here because we're in danger if I do. Like it just uh, suddenly it felt very like fatiguing. It was very fatiguing. To, to I just there. remember that. So then when we had the game, we were one of the reasons we were sitting in front of Matt and Mandy's RV and everybody was Closest okay. to the and red at this tent. point I really did not have a clue. At this point, before that night, I did not have a clue that Dustin and Leslie had it. Um I thought possibly Matt and Mandy, just based on the way people were walking around ahead of time, but I didn't know. So they were, Dustin and Leslie were amazing actors because we all sat around basically trying to keep an eye on the key room door because we didn't know, was it a park pass or was it a key room key to let you get a chance for the park pass? So nobody ever went in there. So I came up with this idea for ourselves because I want to know who has it to set up GoPros. I had one on the roof of our RV and one on the tongue pointing at the key room door so that when we came back from, whatchamacallit, from the orb soccer, which we didn't know that was the game, we would be able to go through the footage and see did anybody ever go in the key room door. But, if, but nobody, of course, ever did. Because if they, they just won the actual immunity. They didn't win the chance for We didn't immunity. know that though. They won But you immunity. see the panic that was pouring in? Yeah. So with all that being said, we head off to the orb soccer. So now let's roll the footage of coming back from orb soccer. <sighs> Ugh, that was a tough game. Dude, we gave our all. I, I honestly could not be prouder of Team Red. We know walking on that field we were outsized because it was I mean, it was a brick wall. They were a we brick were wall. So yeah, so we just played. We just finished playing the what is it called? It was soccer, but it was really like football. No, but what rugby. are the, uh, the the orb challenge? Zorb. The Zorb, the Zorb soccer game. And uh, I didn't get out the entire game. I didn't take a break because we, you know, there were you, you had to look at like you know Matt Strength. and Andy, and you know like 
Matt had problems with the with his prosthesis. So that's know, a hard thing because you're he, getting he turned upside he's down. Gonna, he's going to get hurt, and I, gonna, I don't want him to be able to play. And and Mandy, unfortunately, no. like you know, she had a little bit of claustrophobia, claustrophobia. So I was like, Mandy, you need to go out. Yeah. So I just volunteered to stay in for the whole game, and like. Somewhere in the second quarter, I was like, I can't see. I just cannot see. Because right. every time the whole goal was get the ball in the air and then kind of hit it. And so I would, we would get it up in the air, but then I would look up and I couldn't see where the ball is to hit it. So I finally flung my helmet off, handed it to Todd and, and said, give me a camera. And I looked in the camera and I said, I assume the risk for playing with no helmet. But you didn't in there, Joe. If it was just taking well, off your helmet. So I took off my helmet. And here's the thing. Listen, a a as a sports official, the thing that helps prevent the concussion the most actually isn't the helmet. It's a mouthpiece, which none of us are wearing a mouthpiece anyway. Right. So I was like, I got a giant helmet around my head. I just kept my head like in the Zorb. And then what kept happening was my dentures my upper upper dentures kept falling down yeah because the week before we were supposed to come here they cracked in half cracked in half and so literally the day we were leaving they cracked in half it was like midnight we talked about it in a different video so i ran to an emergency dentist they repaired it but they're extremely loose now and it was either back out of coming here because i'm not doing this without teeth or <laughs> Just deal with the fact that they're very, very loose. So every time I would hit, the teeth would drop. And I'm like, okay, we've got, we, we're here no matter what. Whether we go home or not, we're voted out. We have to stay here until the 13th of February. So I was like, I can't go from now until then. If they, I'm, I was afraid they were going to drop. And then I was going to... Somebody step on them or well, something? Well, they were coming out in my mouth. And I was afraid I was going to A, swallow them, or B bite down and it would crack again oh, okay so i finally called time and i just took my i was a hockey player i took out my removable dentures <laughs> and i went over i put them in my pocket i'm like now i'm here okay and and i felt like now i can really give it my all and we did we gave it our all it's just blue team's a brick wall i stayed i mean kevin is huge i stayed most of my time just like putting myself in the line of fire and being doing handstands yeah you were like flipping i was so proud of you baby give me cash i was I, so proud of you i was like it was funny because kevin looked at me and he's like you ain't gonna block me and i was like I, I may not win over you. You but, eat a bag of sugar every hour. Like, we're going to at least burn that sugar out of your system and I have you get gas. I am going to... I am going to exhaust you. I'm going to lose to you over and over again. It was like... It was seriously like the Doctor Strange... I'm so proud of you. ...strategy. So I was like, we don't give up. I, if I don't hear that bell ring, we don't stop. And, and it's just a no-quit attitude. And I was there to play. And we played until... The clock ran out. Unfortunately, in the the kind of rumor mill is is everybody's voting us out. Right. That that's unfortunately the rumor mill. We were playing for our life, and um, it looks like they're gonna all vote for us. I don't know why they're gonna vote for us. Um, are they intimidated because they because we don't give up and they don't think they can beat us? I, I don't know if that's the smartest thing because Team Blue is just going to pick everybody off. They're going to keep winning and keep winning and keep winning. So I hope they'll I mean, keep I, us for this stream. They're going to get rid of us. Now you're going to be... Unless the strategy of the other players is go down a player and now they're going to be able to pay, play the changing lanes pass and pull over a blue player and... You know, if I was them, I'd pull over somebody like Kevin or something like if that. If Kevin makes it tonight. Um, well, they don't, have, they don't have to vote. Only we vote. So now oh. it's it's going to be four players blue, three players green, uh, three players red. Now tomorrow, they're going to get to pull over a player. Yeah. And blue can't counteract it. We know that Kevin has already played his park pass. So you know he doesn't have one unless he found that one today. So he's going to play the park pass. And at that point, you know, he played it already. Red can pull him over. He's now a member of Team Red. Now you got their strongest player. And he's already, like, on the chopping block for Blue. Yeah, definitely. So now you can bring him over and possibly win. That's the only strategy that I can think that's going through their head. But... I don't, but I think that they're getting rid of strong players. I know we may look weak, but 
We have Tenacity. participated in every challenge. We won. You won the axe challenge. Uh, we maybe that's what it is. Is they think that we're we've got think the best, too much, Joe. and that we're gonna just keep winning. So, but I think they still need us now to win. I think they need us to win, but they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna send us home tonight. So we, as much as I don't want to, the the one player that I know that I cannot beat just because of age. Is David, it, it, and Jess. is David and Jess. Like, they're, they're athletes, they're strong, they're young. Mm -hmm. So, even though it's probably going to be a worthless vote, we're, right. we're going to write down David and Jess's name. And it's like, if they see this, it's no hard feelings, but... It's because you're so awesome. I'm, I'm not writing my own name down. No. You know, but nobody has come to us and said, like, hey, like, let's have an alliance. So... You know, we'll write a name down, and I'm going to cross my fingers and um, hope that somebody else writes their name down and, and has the same thing. So, yeah, we'll see. We're about to go out to the vote now. We'll check back with you later. Oh, my gosh. I am in shock. Oh shock. My. We were certain we, we were, were going We were certain home. we were going home. Certain. We, we thought this is the last video diary. <laughs> so, Yeah. Oh my gosh. So let, let's walk through what happened. Mm -hmm. It came to our attention that it was going to be a three to one vote against us. Yeah. That that's, it, it was, I mean, everyone said to Rachel, like, first of all, the wags never came to us at all. Right. Um, which they didn't really come to us yesterday until the very, very end, like literally right before the vote when they said they were going to vote out girl camper. Um, but yesterday I did talk to Jess and David and we kind they kind of said that like listen we're going to vote off girl camper we were going to do three of us voting girl camper it was us them and Matt and Man uh, Matt and Mandy and that if for some reason the girls would have played immunity cuz again remember we didn't we know totally thought they had immunity. that the park pass was that person gets to decide so we were going by the assumption of you play with the three of them and that if they played it, because at the time we thought that they would get, get to play it. Now you're going to have to vote for somebody else that the backup would be the WAGs only because they're a strong team mm -hmm. and they hadn't talked to us. Right. So when nobody came to us today, we, we kind of figured that it was us. And then at the very last second, as a matter of fact, <laughs> while we were playing, Mandy comes out on the field and I didn't know about Mandy's claustrophobia yeah. issue. And so like she kind of bent down and she's like, what's the plan? And I said to her, like on the field, I said, well, my, I, I Rachel said that you're voting for us. To, and she was like, no, I meant, like, she was like, yes, I meant, or no, she said, no, I meant, like, what What's are we, play on the field? what are we doing on the field? And I'm like, well, there's confirmation. They're voting for us. And because she didn't say, no, I'm not voting for you. She was just like, I meant this. And I'm like, great. Like, so it's, it's three against one. So when we got back here to the RV, I just went up to Matt and I said to him quietly, like, just tell me, just be honest with me. Are, are, are you guys voting for us? Are we going home? I'm not mad. I just want to know. I just want to know. Are, like, are, am I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be shocked. Like, I, I, we thought we were going home, but I don't want everybody to say, no, you're not going home. I don't want to be blindsided. Right. Like, just let me know it's coming. I'm I'm good. I'm not mad. Again, I feel like we already won because we got to be here. But I, I still want to know. I mean, I want to be in the game if we can be in the game. And so he knocked on the door real quick right before the vote and said, hey, I want to let you know we're going to vote for the Nomads. And so we figured, okay, the Nomads. and the WAGs are going to vote for us. Right. And we're going to vote for the Nomads. So there's like a 2-2. So it's going to be a 2-2 tie. And I don't know 
if the Wags changed their mind at the last second. Well, what what um, Dustin said to me was, like, after the vote, was basically, like, he didn't want to gamble. He right. didn't want to gamble with it. But he didn't did they go push into it, it? Like, they were going to write our name down. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not going to ask. I don't need to push the issue because God had us tonight. Yeah. Because, boy, talk about a miracle. Mid midnight. Like, well, it's funny. It's 1120 right now. Right. So, is it so right before the vote, Todd gets up and he says, okay, I want everybody to know it's two to two. So, here is the way this is going to work. If you vote and there is a tie, I'm going to ask you to re-vote. And if you re-vote and we don't have, and we still have a tie, I'm going to reach my, reach my hand in and pull out a name and that's who's going home. And we kind of agreed, like we, I even said to Matt and Mandy, listen, I'd rather take my gamble that way. We'll we have nothing vote, to lose. <laughs> we'll, we'll vote for the nomads. They're going to vote for us. We're going to have a second vote. We kind of quietly agree because I even looked at Matt like we're still going here. Both votes. He's like, yes. So we figured it's going to come down to Todd's reaching his hand in. What's not clear now is when when Todd says he's going to reach his hand in, is he going to reach his hand in for the two people that had votes? Or was it he's going to reach his hand in? to a pot with all four teams left and pull one of the teams okay, out. Okay, so I, I... I think that's what the WAGs think is going to happen. But I don't think that's what was going to happen. I think... I The way I was interpreting it from Todd was... It's from the two that the were The two voted teams for. that had votes, he's going to reach his hand in. So we we're like, we have a 50-50... At least give us the 50-50 shot. I don't want to go home that way. But it's better than the way it was, where we were sure we were Guaranteed. going home. At least that. And but I was I was positive we were going home. I was positive we were going home. So we were absolutely shocked. And I mean, I didn't understand why we were going home because again I felt like the nomads are stronger than us. And if you're trying to get rid of somebody that you can't beat, it's definitely them. I don't think it's us. Well, and that's what the wags except said. for our sheer will. Well, the wags did say like after the vote that it was just it was gameplay, it was strategy for the long. He said game. that they didn't they they couldn't risk. They don't want to go out with their name being drawn. And like, they think that the nomads were going to be as far as like if it's a head to head physical competition that they thought that the nomads would have them so that we we're more like evenly matched and they and probably really they I could think, take us. I think that I think we're pretty evenly matched with them. Um they have their strengths, we have our strengths, they have their weaknesses, we have our weaknesses, but I think overall we are pretty evenly matched. Now we are going in tomorrow four teams to three teams. We have the um the changing lanes pass but now we've been told here's the thing if we play the changing lanes pass tonight it's four to four but now the other team can play theirs and pull their player back and it's back to four to three. that's what they mean in that pass where it says if you play it too early it won't do nothing so you really can't play it until you're down two four to two yeah. that's no i don't want to get there i don't okay hopefully god's got our back tomorrow i know god's got our back tomorrow god's got your back every and day. we're gonna win tomorrow god's got your back my prayer is we win tomorrow mm -hmm. the other team has to vote somebody out and they don't think of what we just said which is so they're gonna go we play our pass Pull the player over back over to them, and then guess what? We get to pull our player back. There's a really good chance there could be a double elimination. There's definitely one more. We know that there's got to be one more double elimination. But and and we have we have some things that we have to think about. I mean, I'm worried about Matt's leg. I'm I'm, I'm wor very worried. He he said he doesn't even think he's going to be able to use his prosthetic tomorrow. I'm really hoping that tomorrow's challenge is not brute strength. Tonight was a brute strength challenge. And I just have to say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but. I'm so proud of you. You 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 say all the time you don't have an athletic bone in your body, but you brought it today. I can, I can get you, you whooped like it. the best of them. 
it wasn't just whooped. You made some amazing saves. You were running. I mean, listen, I mean, honestly, I'm not bragging, but like, I'm used to what we were like when we walked on the grass field. I'm like, this is my, I got this. Like, I can't run on pavement. It hurts my ankle, but boy, I'm used to running on grass. And so I wasn't really worried about that. I mean, that thing is heavy. I will say that. And when somebody hits you and you go whoosh, but you took it like a champ. Well, thank you. And I wanted to be in the game as long as possible because we really thought we were going home. And I, I'm like, we are a team. Like, we're on the red team. And I'm sorry for wanting to just quit. I, yeah, because there was a point where you're like, why am I even bothering to do I, this? I, I did. I, 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 at one point, leaned over to Rachel and I'm like, if they're all voting for us, why are we? why don't we just... Why are we letting ourselves get beat up? They're going to vote. We're already down three goals to none. Why don't we just let us go sit and let the people who are all going to vote us off go out? But you're like, no, we, we don't, don't do that. We, we don't quit. We don't quit. And like, let's just keep trying. It was just like, you know, it's we that need, moment. We needed to be true to each other as a team. And so that was why I was like, once I got into the game, I did not get out of the game because I'm like, I knew that we, we need to be shoulder to shoulder. Like we were fighting for our lives and I'm not letting my teammate fight for his, for, fight for our life by himself. I'm going to say this. That game is fun. That is fun. I, I actually want to find out. I should not say this because you're going to like slap me upside the head for saying this. <laughs> I, I want to find out where they ordered them from and, and play a Zorb soccer game with our children. Oh, I think it'd be fun. I, I, <laughs> We're a pretty competitive family. Well, I mean, it, it was it was a fun game, and I'm glad we gave it our all. But I am truly hoping that it is not a brute we gotta win challenge tomorrow. tomorrow we got to win. I don't want to vote off anybody tomorrow, and I certainly don't want to have to make a decision of, like, vote the wags. You're going to end up with a three-way tie. Right. That's just not where I want to go. No. Or, like, and, and it's like... I don't really want to vote off Matt and Mandy, but I'm I'm worried about Matt. I'm worried about his health, and I don't want him to injure himself. I'm worried about them, but I'm I am not prepared to write their name down. Yeah, so we just gotta win. We gotta win. <laughs> this. Okay, so this week I, I have this. Uh, we had to turn the camera back on because I have to say something that I am so proud of you about. Yes. First of all, we were all sitting around today. Was like. A lot of, like, sitting around today talking. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, in, in fact, I had this conversation with Stacy at one point when there wasn't a lot of people around and we were confident we were going home. Right. And, you know, we were, it was just the two of us before we started the game tonight and we were talking and she was like, I said, oh, what did you do today? And she's like, I worked. And I'm like, I wanted to work. We wanted to do a live stream for our audience. But... I'm like, you can't, you, we, we made this decision. One of us always has to be out there because Any kind of you don't want to give anybody a chance to talk about you. It's like, oh my, the, the emotional and mental side of this game is so much harder than I anticipated because it's like, if I come in here and work and we do a live stream, that means there's three teams out there that all get to talk about us. Yeah. And so we're like, well... If we are always have one of us in that pile, they can't talk about us. Right. And so we didn't get to do our live stream. So we would take turns. Like, I'm going to go work. You stay out here. You go in and do what you need to do, and I'll stay out there. Yeah. And Stacy's like, Stacy said to me, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, yeah, you can't. It's like, it's like what I did with you when we were dating. I just dated her every single day because I figured so if I show up, away. if I talk to her every single night, she had no chance to ever date somebody else. Because I was like, she's a catch and she's going to get caught and I'm not going to give anybody a chance to catch her. So I just wore me down. I literally saw her every single day until she said, I do. <laughs> so it was just, and I feel like, and that's what this was like, but. We, the thing I'm really proud of you about is like, you are the girl that like, hey, like new towel every time I take a shower. We are day five. Yes. 
and you are wearing the same shirt. I and have not even attempted to hand wash it. This is my lucky shirt because I was like, as well, long we've lost. It, well, but the thing is, is that we have not get gotten voted off. Oh, okay. That's so the lucky shirt we haven't gotten. We didn't, well, if that's the case, if we're going by that. Yeah, no, you have to wear it tomorrow, too. Don't I mean, we wearing. have two other shirts. I think that we should do it every five days. I want to make it that, like, every five days. Like, start a new one. So, we have got through five days. Five is my favorite number. Number grace. So, so we're going to put on a new shirt tomorrow? New shirt for the next five days. How about that? Because I, I ain't going out. Six is not my favorite number. <laughs> so, like, I say, let's start with a fresh shirt. Tomorrow. In the second set of five. It, it is funny though. I, I do have to give a shout out to the to the Today is Someday crew. Well, that's the shirt. We smell like smoke and everything. No, else. I smell like BO. I smell like armpit. Well, if there's an armpit, smell it. It's armpit. Uh, I don't smell that. I just smell smoke. But I have to give a shout out to the Today is Someday crew. Because we were all sitting around talking and they were like I haven't bathed in five days. And I'm like, we've showered every single day. And they're like, well, how big is your great tank and your water tank? I'm like, we only have a 40-gallon water tank, and we haven't even used 75 or 25% of it. And yeah. they're like, how? I'm like, because of the day is Sunday, crew, tell us about these scrubbies things. Yes. And those things are awesome. They like, we have literally every day been able to put, like, you put a drop of water in it. We have our instant hot water heater. We take the hot, we run the, the water into a bucket until we get hot water out of the, out of the tap because you got whatever's in the line because it's cold. Yeah. We save that water to flush the toilet so we're not wasting any of the water. We use the scrubbies, a couple capfuls of water, lather ourselves down, and then step in the shower to rinse it off. You don't even have to rinse it off, but I, I, I want to rinse it off. And we have bathed every single day and the rest of the team is like, I haven't gotten to bathe. And I'm like, I'm thankful for the Today is Sunday crew because we'd probably be in the same situation had they not told us about the scrubbies. Yeah, but it's definitely time for a new shirt. Wow, that was an amazing day. Physically, mentally, emotionally. I know I can remember that night just trying to muster enough energy to even like talk for us to have like our final thoughts for the day and go even, you know, laundry room diaries that that we were taping for the show to see if they needed that information. I was so wiped out. I mean, we ended it close to midnight. It was very emotional. Um, it was very obvious that David and Jess also, they were blindsided. They were not expecting to go home. And I think everybody thought we were going home. and, and We we've, did. <laughs> we, we thought we were going home for sure. Right. And that's why I say in there, like, one of my most regrettable moments. But again, you're in the moment. It's emotions are high. Was during the Orb Soccer when we were losing. And I just felt like our team wasn't trying at that point. And I... We knew we were told by Matt and Mandy and everybody else that everyone is voting you home. Yeah. So I kind of went to Rachel and had this attitude and, and said to her, why don't we just pull ourselves out of the game? If they're going to send us home and there's no way we can win at this point, why don't we just let them all get beat up? But And my, you wouldn't let me. My thought is, no, you cannot control what other people will do. You, you can't, you cannot control it. You know, you, you think about in a shower, you have like all of these hypothetical, you know, uh, arguments or you have these hypothetical things where you're this, you're going to control the dialogue and you're going to control the outcome in all of these hypothetical situations. But the reality is you cannot control other people or what they could do. The only thing that you are in charge of that no one can take from you is your own response. Now you can give your response away. You can you can go counter to to who you know you are and just give it to them, give in to them. But I did not want to do that. I right. thought, yeah, I understood the gravity of how seriously close we were to going home. Like I understood, yeah, it looks like everyone's kind of pulling out to save their own energy for the next day. For for the the coming challenges, that's that's what it seemed like. Like to this us. is a last cause in this moment, and since Joe and Rachel are the only ones that are gonna be going home tonight, and we have to kind of save our energy for tomorrow, let's just kind of 
you know, give 75% or 80%. And, you know? and I don't know for sure that that's know. what was going through their heads, but that's how we felt in the moment. And right. when Rachel gave me the little pep talk of we don't quit, that's when we basically went balls to the wall. My helmet comes off as balls. we talked about. My teeth come out and I'm like, we're going to go to the buzzer. And we're just going to play no matter what, whether they're sending us home or not. And it didn't move the scoreboard, but I think it moved us. Yeah. And I think that's really important. You know, a lot of times it's like, well, was it worth the result? Because, hey, you took your teeth out and you took your helmet off and you put yourself at risk and stuff. And it didn't result in a single extra point on but that But even board. in the games that we've won so far, it didn't result in anything. But, but it resulted in us knowing we can change, do something. A change of mindset. Right. And I think that that was really what we needed in that moment. So we end up there. We've got, you know, David and Jess go home. We're still here. We are shocked. We're shocked. And I do remember at one point Dustin coming over like, I've got your back. Like he patted us on the back. I look at that now and I'm like... I appreciate it, but at the same time, I see that there was also a goal to vote us off. So, so I want to talk about that. Yeah, because was that to the, keep it, us in, on the hook, making in, us think that we were provided for something in that moment? Yeah. Okay. In that moment, in that night, I wasn't sure exactly what happened. We thought we were going home. We did tell Matt and Mandy, we're going to vote here. And, and we did not have an alliance with them. Rachel basically put it out to Matt and Mandy because we just really liked them as people. Right. We were not discounting them as competitors because they've no. got some strong they got fire in them. points. Yep. Um, but we liked them. So Rachel had said to Mandy, you can do what you want, but we are not going to write down your name tonight. And then you just are hopeful. And this is who we're going to vote for. Yeah. And so then I just was hopeful that in like, hey, here's the full disclosure. This is what who I'm going to vote for. And if you- it's, Hoping that she would be like, okay. Me too. But we never asked her to actually say, I won't die right now. I did, as you saw in the video, say to Matt that- listen, you know, we would like to work with you. I understand, like, if you don't want to, all I want you to do is if you're going to write my name down, like, even if it's right before the vote, just tell me. I am not going to be mad. This is a game. We feel like we had already won just having the opportunity to be there. And so I just wanted to know so that I didn't have that shocked look because we wanted to go and hang out with people afterwards. Right. And I respect his right to, even though you're asking for that, like not give you that because, you know, seconds and moments matter. And I do think that you, I mean, I think this can be a, a fault of ours in this game, but you were co like constantly talking about like gameplay. Like if, if someone do, does this, the response can be di this. Cause you're a problem solver naturally, you know? But and you need that in these kind of games. You do, but- It's like chess. I think that you had established yourself as a chess player. So if someone says, okay, well, this is how I'm gonna vote. Cause I, you're asking me, yeah, we are gonna vote for you. I could see the danger of you suddenly coming up with some sort well, of gameplay. At that point, there was no real, I understand what you're saying, but there was no way you were gonna be able to manipulate it anyway. The thing was, is at that point, like right before the vote, I started to suspect that Dustin and Leslie had a token because Dustin knew what our strategy was, that if we were to get a token, since we were not allowed to tell you, if you asked us point blank, do you have the token, we would just change the subject. So we were not violating the rules. Right. And I'm sure Todd's gonna see this and go, yeah, that would have been the violating spirit the, of rules. the rules. But we felt like if we just didn't answer you or change the subject, that would not be violating the rules of I can't tell you because I'm not going to answer you. If we do have, if we don't have it, we'll say, no, I don't have it. But if we do have it, we will just change the subject. And we told that to everybody. And so I had, started having conversations with Dustin of unless you have it and he just wouldn't answer. So I felt like there was a chance that he was kind of using the same tactic back on me. I like kind of saying like, I'm not hey, lying. I, now, why would he do that and make me think he has it? Because he wouldn't want to play it. 
And so like, and basically saying, don't waste your vote on me because I have it and you know what the result is gonna be now. Watching his diary room, I'm still confused. So <laughs> the thing is, is that, so you, you had Matt and Mandy had said they were gonna vote at the last minute for um, Jess, and David. Jess and David and we were gonna vote. So now we know it's two votes. I don't know if Matt and Mandy now had a conversation with Dustin and Leslie and said, this is where we're going to vote. I don't know what happened because their their tactic when they go into that diary room was confusing. Where he says, we're going to vote vote this way and then we'll play our park pass and then send we'll home send Joe home and Joe and Rachel. But then they end up finishing the statement with, we have to hold on to this park pass. So I feel like they... Somebody said something that we're going to vote for David and Jess, and they didn't want to take a chance that you would have two votes for them and two votes for David and Jess. So they felt like if there's a tie, we'll play our park pass and we can just send home Joe and Rachel. But we don't want it to come to that. We don't want to play the park pass. So later. So we're going to vote with everybody else and then worry about, and then we have the park pass to take out Joe and Rachel later, later on. Right. And so it's smart. I, I think that that's where they were going. I have not asked him and it doesn't, I mean, to me, that would be the smart way to go. Like hold on to that park pass to get yourself the final two right? on each team. That would be my strategy. And so vote with everybody else. But they knew that they had it, that if their name showed up and everybody was lying to them, which they were never on our radar to get rid of. No, they really weren't. Not at this point. No, not at all. I can honestly say they're they were not on our radar. But it it was it was a, a really hard night. It was. Because like again, we felt relieved, but at the same point, like it's, upset that somebody else goes home. Oh, it's awful. It is awful for anybody to go home because you know, like all of the the pauses that that every contestant had to make in their year, in their calendar year. To, to be here at that this time, to participate in this. you had to give up basically a month. So this is a lot. They're, the, these two young people are really, like, have amazing careers that they have to, like, pause in order to be there. Because they had to shoot, like, right after the show, like, across country. Because David had a new contract in a new hospital that they had to go right. to. And so it's kind of like you do think, well, dude, if, I, if I'm not going to win... I could have like taken a vacation or something, right? Or or done something else with this time. And so it's sad. It's just you feel sadness for for it. But this was a chance of a lifetime to be a part of something like this. And we hoped that that was what they were taking away from it. And it seems like that was what, you know, from look, talking to them in the post show, that they really enjoyed their time as well. And yeah. they saw it as a good experience. So that's day five. So we're here for another day. Yes. So next week we'll come back with week six. It was a good day. It was a good day. I, I enjoyed like day six. So I can't wait for that I'm one. I'm excited for everyone to see it. Yeah. Are you? Because what was what was your favorite part from up to this point in the game? So up to this point in the game? Okay, because I'm excited about ne next week's episode. Um, what I'm excited about in the game is... Honestly, the victory of that moment of vote off when we don't go home, both of those times. You figure we've had two votes for the red team, and I saw- Our name is on every ballot. Both times. Right. So in, in each time, I think we were prepared to go home and to do that with a good attitude of sportsmanship, but I didn't want to, and the relief- that we didn't have to go home and that we were still in the game was really an awesome thing. And for next week, I just want to see if we screwed up. Yeah. Let's because see if we there was up. something that we did and we want to know if we are the ones who screwed up. Did we screw up? Now, if you like seeing videos like this, please do us a favor. Hit the like button on this video. It really does help us build our channel. But more importantly, it lets us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see. Also hit the subscribe button and the little bell button and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time, happy, happy camping. camping.